So Stephanie, you really go stay in strangers' homes in foreign countries by yourself and you feel safe? I'm a house sitter. I'm like Goldilocks, but I've been invited to come. Not only do I stay in strangers' homes, but sometimes I actually come and stay in the house before they leave and they come back before I leave. So sometimes we stay there at the same time. And yes, I do feel safe. So we'll talk about the steps that I take to ensure my safety. If you're new here, welcome. My name is Stephanie Perry. I am a year round house sitter. When I was 41, I quit my job to travel for a year on savings. And when I wanted to keep it going, instead of going back to work, I started house sitting. Make sure that you're subscribed to my channel for videos on how to travel long term, how to take a career break to travel, and how to become a house sitter. And also ring that notification bell so that you'll be notified when I post a new video. All right, so over the course of the last three or four years, I've house sat year round. I know that through the house sitting service that I go through, I've had 20, this is my 21st house sit, the one that I'm in right now, which is so beautiful, don't you agree? But I've done almost as many house sits that were not through a service, that were through referrals and word of mouth. So I would say that I'm over 30 in terms of how many house sits I've done, not quite 40. And yes, I'm always alone in the house sits. I travel alone anyway, for the most part. So as a house sitter, I'm always by myself. I have a video, if you haven't seen it already, I have a video on learning how to travel solo. So yes, I'm a pro at traveling alone. That's part of the reason that I feel comfortable being alone in a stranger's home. Being able to be self-reliant is one of the must-haves for a successful house sitter. It's one of the things I mentioned in my Is House Sitting Right For You video. If you haven't seen that video yet, click the link in the description. But again, remember, not all house sitters are solo travelers. There are couples who house sit and families who house sit and mother-daughter house sitting teams. So being able to travel solo is not a requirement for being a house sitter. But there are a handful of steps that I take to ensure my safety when I'm house sitting. First, I rely on reviews and recommendations. When I book through the house sitting service, I read the reviews and I also read between the lines and the reviews to make sure that I am in a safe home and in a safe environment. When the house sit is a referral from another person, I have to rely on that person to not want to put me in danger. I have to trust that that person wouldn't set me up with a house sit that isn't safe. And if it's someone that I don't necessarily know, I would make sure that I do step number two, which is visit the house before I agree to house sit. I kind of place myself in a couple of different retirement communities in Mexico. A lot of the house sits that I book are within those communities so I can stop by visit the home before I agree to house it for the person. If that's not possible, there's always video chat. I've done a video chat, I think, for pretty much every house sit that I've booked through the service because I want to check the client out and the client wants to check me out. So we usually FaceTime or do a Skype call so that we can see each other face to face and they'll usually, t you know, take walk me around the house a little bit on the, on the video chat so I can see what's what. An underrated safety tip is to have travel insurance. I'm not talking about travel insurance that protects you in the event of, you know, like a flight cancellation or lost luggage. I'm talking about travel medical insurance that covers you in case you need to be hospitalized or in case you need to be medically evacuated from another country back to your country. I have an entire video on do I need travel insurance? As you can tell, the answer is yes but the video will, it will explain to you what you need to make sure that you're covered for when you're traveling outside of your country. I always like to pick walkable neighborhoods, even before I know the exact address of the house sit, because you usually don't get an address until you're confirmed because people don't want strangers knowing where they live when you already know what dates they'll be gone from their house. So they give you generally a neighborhood and you can check out the neighborhood make sure that it's either walkable or close to safe public transportation or even that they have Uber. I think a lot of the times when people ask me, do you really feel safe house sitting? Do you really feel safe traveling to these places and staying in people's homes? People are forgetting that a lot of the world is just much safer than the United States. A lot of places don't have the violent crime rates that we have. They don't have the number of guns that we have in the United States. So yeah, I do feel safer when I house sit. And then another way that I make sure that I'm safe when I'm house sitting is that I just ask specific questions. In my worst house sits video, I talked about a dog who got really aggressive with me uh, really fast. And how the lady, once I told the homeowner, the dog owner, she was like, oh yeah, that happened before. So on the site, you can see she had had three house sitters before and no one had bothered to leave her any review. 
Um, so if I just asked her, why is that? Why don't you have reviews? I would have gotten eventually during the course of the conversation to the real deal, to the real story. But I didn't ask the questions. Frankly, I was just desperate. I really needed the house sit in LA because I wanted to go to an event and I just, you know, LA is expensive. I'm not paying for a hotel there. So I put myself in a situation that could have become unsafe just because I didn't ask the right questions. Don't forget that I've created House Sitter School specifically to help you not make that mistake. In House Sitter School, I give you questions that you need to make sure that you get answered before you agree to book any house sit or pet sit. And yes, one of them is what problems have previous house sitters had that does not show up in your reviews. So other than the dog thing, which happened you know, in just a few seconds and the dog was over it, in no time, I'm the one who held a grudge. Um, have I had any other scary moments? Any moments where I felt unsafe? No. <laughs> no. Um, like I said, I pick house sits with reviews. I ask the right questions. I video chat or I visit before I go. And no, I haven't been unsafe. The house sit that I'm in now is in San Miguel de Allende in Mexico. It's beautiful. There's one cat who could take or leave me. She's not that into me. And I get to hang out in this amazing town. It's one of Mexico's pueblos magicos, magical towns. Eat all of the foods and walk around snapping picture after picture after picture. So what about house sitting while black? I'm black, clearly. Do I ever get passed over for house sits because I'm black? Probably, but who knows? Sometimes people don't respond because they don't need a house sitter anymore and they just forgot to cancel. Sometimes they have someone kind of confirmed, but they don't want to hit the confirm button and, and stop the process. Sometimes they just don't like me. <laughs> and other times, yes, it may be because I'm black. If you're on a house sitting service and you're not getting booked, it could very well be a problem with your profile and your pitch. I do stay booked to house sit back to back to back. So if you're having a problem getting booked to house it through a service, it could be that there's a problem with your profile or your pitch letter. I have a template for the exact pitch letter that I use to get booked to house it. The link is in the description, uh, or you can go to housesitterschool.com slash template and get the exact letter that I use to get booked. Frankly, I found it much easier to get booked immediately outside of the U.S. than inside the U.S. Um, and I think that has to do with me being black, especially among older clients, among like retirement age clients. In the US, I do think that I'm a little less likely to get booked by them. And then again, in cities with younger populations, um, I house sat for a few months straight in San Francisco and I've house sat in Washington, DC. Um, I had no problems at all. But one additional question that I do ask to ensure my safety when I'm house sitting, especially in the U.S., is which one of your neighbors knows that I'm here and who can I go introduce myself to right away? So I do ask for a neighbor's phone number and I either shoot them a text or I've actually had people take me next door and introduce me to the neighbor just to have one person around who knows that I'm supposed to be in that house. A lot of clients do this for their house sitters automatically, not just because I'm a black house sitter, but they do it always just because it's good to have someone around in case something goes wrong and you don't know who to contact. But something that I love about travel and about traveling like this is that it has taught me that people aren't out to get me. I think that in general, I used to have the idea that, you know, the world was us versus them or me versus the world. And for the most part, people have been extremely helpful, whether they're strangers or clients or friends of friends, people have taken their time to help me out in every country I've ever been in. That's part of the magic of travel and it's why I feel safe as a house sitter. I've seen the video that's a TED talk by a man who basically hitchhiked around the world. And he said in every country he was in, people would tell him, you know, you're safe here, but when you get to the next country, watch out for them. You know, people would say, you're safe here in Hungary, but when you get to Serbia, be careful, watch out for them. And then in Serbia, you know, you're safe here, Serbians are good, but when you get to Montenegro, watch out, you know, but people have been good to me. Speaking of which, I have some story time videos coming up soon. I'm so excited. <laughs> I'll tell you some stories of stuff that happened to me while I was on my grown up gap year, while I was just traipsing around the world for a year. So again, make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell. Please take a second and hit the like button, thumbs up for this video. And if you have any other safety questions about house sitting or about long-term travel, leave them in the comments, I'm there construction noises next door are starting, so I gotta go. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.
Okay, time for construction noises. 